Now this aquarium has been totally overrun by this advanced algae and it's at literally smothering the corals. And the problem with a lot of these algaes are that they are direct competition for the coral and some of them actually admit neurotoxins which suppresses the corals. So we're gonna to have to go and rip most of this out now and we just need to be very aware of um, these algaes going crazy. But I'm gonna test the water now and find out if there's a reason for the algae going crazy. Um, so the specific gravity is 0.024, so I'm very happy with that. The temperature is 26.8, which I'm very happy with. That's on the high side, but I'm very happy with that. Now, what I'm worried about at the moment is all of this algae releasing um, um, toxic competition um, chemicals into the water. So that definitely can happen. So making sure we've got some fresh poly filter in the filter would also be very important because the poly filter can remove a lot of these neurotoxins and so forth that various organisms use to compete with each other. The KH is 5.7, which is lower than I want it to be. We'll raise that up. The pH is 8.1, which is lower than I want it to be. Um, I'd like that at 8.4, so we'll raise that up. Phosphate's 0.4, so that's not too bad. Um, calcium is um, 4.92, so I'd rather it a bit lower, but I'm not worried about that. Magnesium is 11.21, so I'd rather it a tiny bit higher, but I'm not worried about that. Um, 0.1 ammonia, that's sort of near nothing on these machines. Nitrite, zero, and nitrate, 16. So water quality wise, it's not perfect, but it sure as hell ain't bad. So it'll really be a matter of stripping out this algae that's gone nuts. And actually a fair bit of this has already been pulled out this week. So considering it's already been manually removed and there's so much more to remove, it's definitely choking the aquarium. So that's a bit of a natural biohazard. 40 litre water change on this tank and we've stripped out quite a lot of the algae. But the lesson for today is if you ever see advanced algae taking over your corals, you need to pull it all out physically because in this case, the algae has literally outcompeted and swamped all the coral. So you need to have, having a good set of tweezers or something is a great, like you can get some really nice Aqua L tweezers or something, just, just allow you to just pull it all out. And um, we've also cleaned the skimmer. We've also cleaned the pre-filter and we've given the glass a bit of a clean. Big fan of letting the algae grow on the black wall. Definitely don't let it grow on your strainers, um, but I'm a big fan of cleaning your your glass that you see through regularly because the thing about glass and algae is that if you're cleaning it regularly you'll find it comes off really easily you just go boom and it comes off whereas if you're not cleaning it regularly then it gets very stubborn and then it can often be very very hard to get off so this tank has just been overrun by advanced algae and i am going to send off a triton test because i'm very interested in what the minor and trace elements are going to come out as and that will also give us a very good reference point for future decisions around the tank so anytime there's anything going on or any mystery problems sending off an icp test to triton is something i highly encourage and i probably recommend doing it every three months for no reason other than having your own reference now, salt creep salt creep creates salt creep so the idea with salt creep is just regularly give it a wipe over and then you'll find that salt creep is not really a problem. But if you allow the salt creep to stay, then what happens is the salt creep creates the salt creep. Because if it's a nice, clean, smooth surface and a bit of water splashes on it, the water basically just runs off. But if a bit of water splashes on it and eventually you get salt creep and you get calcium build up and all the rest of it, then basically everything else that goes on it gets snagged by the calcium and the salt creep, which creates more calcium and salt creep. So you'll find it exponentially grows. So if you just give it a little wipe off, then you'll find it takes a while to build back up. But if you don't give it a bit of a wipe up, then you'll find it'll build up and build up and build up and build up like exponentially quick. Then the next thing it starts to do is what's called capillary action. 
and capillary action is where the water almost siphons its way up through little tunnels and that within the salt and then the calcium itself because water can actually go up with capillary action so you can actually have a little salt area that almost gets fed by the salt water and you can be surprised how that little salt can grow into a to quite a little ball of salt so the key to salt creep is just regularly wipe it over and it's no big deal if you don't wipe it over regularly then two things happen one is the salt creep exponentially um, creeps up and gets worse and also you start getting more calcium deposits and they're actually really hard to get off sometimes you even need to use like citric acid and so forth when you get too much of it so just do a wipe over regularly and salt creep isn't a problem now if you're going to play with any of the harder to keep or harder to feed fish like the rainford goby or the mandarin gobies then really the secret to trying to keep these fish alive is regular additions of copepods. pods so we have copepods pods available in the industry now and you can buy copepods, pods put them in your tank and then copepods pods become a beautiful little scavenger that helps to keep the environment nice and clean and allows your fussy fish to feed on them and it's really a matter of adding enough culture so they've got enough food to eat and if at night time you come and put a light on you should see lots of little copepods pods dancing around during the daytime you won't tend to see them at all so your only real option to feed these slow feeders that aren't going to compete is to dose the tank regularly with additions of copepods. pods.